I think as an adult, when you have more adult conversations with your family, I understand more now what he went through coming over in the uh, 40s and 50s. When we think about what our mother might have gone through, arriving here in England, I mean, she talks a lot about um, the teddy boys yeah. and um, a lot of racist attacks. Yeah. Uh, you know, she arrived, I think she arrived between 61 and 62. And just what a massive step that must have been to leave your country. If you think back in those days, yeah, I knew a bit about England, but you didn't have the internet, you didn't have all that knowledge that you have easy access to now. If you really go through that history, there were celebrations that these people were here and they're gonna to help to repair and rebuild and they were, they were invited. And then once things were settled, it was like, well, how long are they gonna be here for? You have to know your bus stop. If you don't know your, know your bus stop, you know, the bus leave you. You know, so them day, it was rough. 60s, 70s, 80s, it was, it was rough. I came to England 21. I was strong then. And we used to go into town on a, night, on a Friday night, Friday and Saturday. It was either make your own entertainment in those days or go drinking in town. Drinking and, you know, celebrate and after you finish work, you go and spend a bit of your money, you know, have a good time. And we used to meet up with Teddy boys, we used to have a lot of trouble with them. It wasn't like it is now. I mean, town's still a dangerous place, but, you know, it was a definite no-go area, you know. Those, those, those white guys didn't want any black people coming into town, let alone black men. You know, the, probably the usual thing of they're taking our women and that kind of thing. We never was afraid of them. One of my dad's really good friends, uh, the late Kenneth Brown, he was small, but he was like, he was tigerish. We always walked together. He, he was very strong. And he said to me, oh, when we, when we walking down the street now, he said, these boys up there look like they, make, they want to make trouble. He said, if you don't look scared, if you look scared, they say, oh, let me, let me, um, let me rush them in army. But if you don't look scared, oh, they just, they look at you, they throw all sorts of words, they get your black bastard and all them sort of things, go back where you come from. But well, that doesn't bother me, uh, neither him. My dad, um, Kenneth Brown, Joseph Freeman, they're placid guys, they really are not mm. trouble-causing men. As long as you don't touch me or touch my friend, you could say all what you want. As we can see now with the press, the black man goes to court, he's not going to get a fair deal, especially no. not in those days. No. So you no. try not to fight if you don't Absolutely. have to, yes. but you have to defend yourself and you had your friends behind you. Yeah. One for all and all for one, that was that type of thing. That's my friend, you know, he's very strong. He was only short, but he had some hard hand. If he give you one of them, he knock you out. This lady, I to sit on the bus and she, she was like this. <laughs> you know, she was sitting there and there was nobody in the seat. And I went to sit on the bus and she started stripping the south like she wanted me to fall off the chair. So I said, so what do you think you're doing? She looked at me and I looked at her and I said, if you do it one more time, I said, I'm going to throw you out the chair. <laughs> I throw you out the seat. <laughs> she says, well, you niggas are not supposed to come. <laughs> And I had a couple of conversations with my mum, uh, my mum's past now, but um, about how it was for her having mixed race children. And I think both of them have kind of played it down as to, you know, well, it was just what we knew, we just got on with it. But now understanding more, reading more, talking to other people about it, kind of thinking about what the hurdles that they overcame, it's just huge. So I says, where I'm coming from, love, it's British. And I've got my British passport, I've got everything. So I am British. I raised my family in Hyde Park. And I had no problem. I had absolutely no problem. You can tell them, you can pick up any one of my kids and they tell you, we had no problem. Anything, anybody said anything, I cut it off. Otherwise, I mean, they have to, <laughs> and everybody knew. Yeah? I didn't, I, ooh, I stood no nonsense. No, nobody interfered any of my kids. And, 
No, 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 no. When I had my time in the, in the, I suppose, in, in the 80s and, and some parts of the 90s, I think my dad saw that parallel because he used to say to me, he was worried that when I went downtown. I've never kind of really appreciated just how much he had to put up with and my other brothers as well. So there were two boys at the eldest one, so they were like, say, some of the first mixed race children in the area in that time. They all managed to survive those those sort of turbulent years. And just like myself, I, I went downtown, I followed my dad much later on, obviously, and I had similar struggles, but it was, the way it was already paid for us, that's what they did. No, Racism is never gonna go, let's get this right. It's gonna always be in our lives, right? Until we're gone, and then it's gonna be Rahima's next gen her generation, right? In town, sometimes you do get a bit of racism, not so much now, but especially when I first started going into town. Yes. I think it's it's still here, but it's not as not as bad like before. But it's here. So you used to get a few snidey looks and a few throwaway comments and stuff. But I've always been taught by my granddad uh, and my dad and my mum as well um, that just let it go over your head because that's their issue. That's their. This is the land of my birth. This is Jamaica.